Blockchain has been talked about as a revolutionary technology that will transform the banking industry by removing the middleman, improving transparency, drastically reducing transaction costs, and creating new business models. There has been a lot of experimentation and POCs in this sector exploring this technology by financial services companies. However, very few of these initiatives have become live production applications due to platform limitations in the current market offerings. Hi, I'm Sanjay Matthew, Senior Director within the Financial Services Industry Solutions Group. And today, I'm going to talk to you about how Oracle's blockchain cloud service helped financial services customers rapidly advance their initiatives and get to production faster. Let's examine the promise of blockchain. 176 billion in added business value by 2025 is estimated by Gartner. More than 2,500 patents have been filed in this last three years just within blockchain by the World Bank. And here's a quote from Jeremy Wilson, Vice Chairman of Corporate Banking Barclays. He talks about, we are in the process of developing a new operating system for the platform. So every bank, every financial services customer out there is experimenting with blockchain with the goal of finding the future. So let's look at what is blockchain first. Blockchain is a system that maintains a distributed ledger in a peer-to-peer -peer network that allows multiple untrusted parties to do business very securely. It also reduces the need for third-party intermediaries. And that enables real-time and unalterable records replicated among participants. So how does blockchain work? So blockchain works by maintaining a distributed ledger of facts and history of the updates. So everyone has their own copy. Changes to the ledger are made by this concept called the smart contracts, which are triggered by transactions from external applications. Participants execute smart contracts on validating nodes and follow consensus protocols to verify results. When consensus is reached under the network's policy, transactions and their results are grouped into blocks, which are appended into the ledger with cryptographically secured hashes for immutability. So let us look at some of the challenges and the opportunities at the enterprise boundary uh, as it relates to legacy technology. One is basically enabling trust in peer-to-peer -peer B2B transaction and avoiding cost and risk of intermediaries. Second is there's a lot of manual error-prone information exchange that's happening in the enterprise boundaries, causing reconciliation errors, causing lack of real-time settlement and risk and poor audibility of the systems. There's also high risk and cost of fraud in cross-company transactions. Real-time information visibility is also not available in this ecosystem. These problems are also available. It can be seen well within the enterprise. If you think about a large global conglomerate who's got multiple ERP systems, multiple systems of records such as ERPs or supply chains, there is lack of visibility, there's lack of cooperation. Blockchain is a good solution for these kind of enterprises as well. Within financial services, when you start looking at some of the key blockchain problems or solutions that are out there, they address the following value drivers. The first one is operational simplification. This is about eliminating reconciliation, improving transparency, and optimization of process. There's a lot of that today in financial services. Second is basically about regulatory efficiency. Almost every process today, there is a regulator touch point in there. Regulator processes encumber banks with a lot of costs. Driving regulatory efficiency with blockchain is one of the second biggest drivers for blockchain. Third is counterparty risk reduction. Blockchain allows multiple counterparties to see each other's position. There is a saying that if blockchain was available within 2008, the financial crisis would not have happened. Fourth, accelerates clearing and settlement. This is one of the most sought out use cases about you know, reducing the time to a settlement from T3 to T0 in trading systems because of the number of parties that are involved in touching the trading and uh, settlement system. The fifth one is basically improving liquidity and capital improvement by transparency that is provided by blockchain. And then lastly, it's eliminating fraud that's primarily happening by improved visibility into asset provenance and full transaction history uh, transparency. So now let us examine some of the blockchain conversation and financial services Oracle's having. And they're mostly in these categories and they all pertain to the value drivers that I talked about. So we're having a number of early POCs and conversations and pilots with our customers in the area of payments, trade, securitization, customer onboarding, KYC, 
and lending and credit advances. These payment solutions could be intra-bank or they could be cross banks, uh, they could be corporate B2B payments. Every one of these uh, problems that are being addressed here require multiple parties and exchange of data, which takes too long today, and there's a lot of operational inefficiencies in these processes. Now let's examine Oracle's strategy for blockchain. It's based on the five tenants that are coming up. The first tenant is that Oracle's focused on delivering an enterprise-grade blockchain cloud platform. The second tenant is that we want to help our customers in all industries, not just financial services, although financial services is an early adopter of blockchain. The third is we want to enable rapid experimentation and production readiness. This is one of the key hurdles that we see in today's environment where there's a lot of experimentation, but not a lot of production adoption. The fourth is basically integration with existing ecosystems. On a panel discussion that I was on, we talked about one of the biggest hurdles for blockchain adoption is integrating with legacy systems. Oracle has a lot of current systems such as SaaS, uh, SaaS systems and um, financial systems. We're focusing on integration with those things, with those applications to fasten the adoption. And lastly, leverage Oracle IP and open source to advance enterprise blockchain capabilities. So Oracle joined the Hyperledger Foundation. So we're leveraging the best of open source as well as Oracle technologies marrying, married to each other to basically improve and create the um, enterprise-grade blockchain technology out there. Now let us look at blockchain cloud service from Oracle. These are based on these three ideas. One is a pre-assembled managed pass environment, which is the whole idea of that it's available on the cloud and Oracle manages it. We allow for rapid global provisioning and simplified operations. Second, we're focused on extending the enterprise boundary, which is basically integration with Oracle SaaS and PaaS customers, as well as basically creating integrations with uh, applications such as NetSuite and Oracle Open Banking Platform and FlexCube. The last one is the resilience um, to be provided to enterprise-grade platforms. So we're focused on security uh, and, and confidentiality, as well as monitoring and autonomous recovery. These are primarily very important features that are important to our enterprise customers. So now let us look at the components of blockchain. In blue is the blockchain nodes and containers, which contains the peer nodes, the smart contracts, the membership services. These are things that are available today on open source. What Oracle's done is taken Hyperledger as a starting point, but around it, we've wrapped it with basically enterprise-grade technology. So we've wrapped it with infrastructure and PaaS services, which contains Oracle's application container cloud service, identity management, event hub, and management services. We also have data services for object store cloud services, and then an administration console, which makes it easier to administer and create blockchain applications. These are some of the biggest issues today in adoption. Blockchain, deploying blockchain requires a lot of manual coding and scripting. We are trying to eliminate that. And lastly, we have REST APIs, which basically expose all of the blockchain services allowing a citizen developer to start creating blockchain applications very easily by just interacting with these APIs. Uh, more importantly, Oracle's focused on SaaS and PaaS integrations, as well as making this blockchain available on public cloud, as well as on a cloud machine, which is basically behind the firewall, as well as integrating with on-prem blockchain applications. Now let us look at the components of the Oracle Blockchain Cloud Service. What you get with Oracle Blockchain is basically one is the validating nodes called peers. Second, you get the ledger, which is the world state, which is the shared ledger, which is available in every node. Third, we get the smart contract and shared code, which is really the business logic to orchestrate the blockchain code and consensus. You get the ordering services, which is important to achieve consensus. We get the membership services, which allows multiple organizations to join the blockchain consortium. You get the REST proxies, and then you get the administrative console. All of these are wrapped by a managed pass layer, which is Oracle managing this thing, taking all of the administrating, uh, administration, the patching, all of those components, and have you focus on purely the business innovation. So this is basically showing enterprise applications, connecting through REST APIs, connecting to a managed pass. So Oracle provides all of these components packaged in so you can focus on the business innovation and get to production faster. 
So now let us look at some of the components from Oracle, which is enterprise grade, that are connected to this out-of-the-box blockchain from open source. We package in identity management cloud services for user role management as well as for authentication. We package in the Event Hub Kafka service for ordering services, object store as well for ordering, application containers to deploy and manage all of the blockchain code, and then management and log analysis cloud services. This is required to manage production applications of blockchain with full transparency. Now let us look at some of the other accelerators that Oracle is focused on. Remember, earlier I had talked about one of the biggest issues with respect to adoption of blockchain is not the blockchain platform itself, but how it integrates with the legacy applications. Integration with legacy is very time consuming, and Oracle's focused on creating all of those integration assets. So in the picture here, you see we are creating integration toolkits to connect with our own applications such as SaaS. We also have Oracle Integration Cloud, which allows you to connect to legacy applications. We have a whole bunch of APIs that are REST APIs that are available on blockchain, which allows you to connect to any developer application. And they are focused on the interoperability of past services such as Java, Node.js, with our blockchain services. And I'll talk about other applications as well that we're connecting. So Oracle's focused on not just the core improving the Oracle blockchain itself and making enterprise great, but also how it can integrate with the rest of the ecosystem. Here's a slide around interoperability. So this shows about how different organizations can really start a blockchain node of itself. So you can see here a blockchain node organization A, B, C, and D. A and B are on the public cloud. C is basically behind a managed cloud such as Cloud Machine. And we've got D, which is on open source Hyperledger Foundation. Oracle Blockchain allows all of these organizations to join one network. And we can also, through channels, allow for privacy between these parties so that not everybody sees all of these transactions. Now, from an enterprise perspective, we are focused on these themes, such as performance at scale with parallel execution of smart contract and elastic scale out. We're focused on operational resilience, such as high availability, autonomous recovery, and continuous backup. From a security and confidentiality perspective, we have integrated identity management, data protection at rest, and certificate revocation management. From a supportability and operations perspective, we have dynamic configuration, monitoring dashboards, as well as zero downtime managed patching. And then from a development perspective, we have integration with any DevOps kit, and we have connections through REST APIs into Java and Node.js SDKs. All of these features allow for enterprises to adopt a blockchain platform with confidence. Now let us look at some of the sample customer on-ramp applications, uh, again, focused on integration. So NetSuite customers, we have 40,000 global customers sitting on NetSuite. All of these are ERPs, uh, supply chain applications, Oracle's focused on creating on-ramp integration so that these customers can start adopting blockchain and participate in a distributed ecosystem. Second, Oracle FlexCube, which is adopted by 319 banks in more than 115 countries. We've created blockchain-specific adapters for FlexCube, again, allowing these banks to connect to blockchain. And then the Oracle Digital Innovation Platform for Open Banking, which has all of those fintechs as well as banking APIs. We've embedded blockchain APIs in there so that banks and fintechs can connect with each other as well as other partners using the security of blockchain. Now, as I start to close out, Oracle's strategy is built on becoming the most comprehensive DLT cloud platform. We're focused on these four big themes making it enterprise ready, as I talked about earlier, focused on basically quick time to value, which is basically stop the experimentation and start to get to production faster. Third is basically manage paths for cloud and on-prem. This is so that we manage the applications and you, the customer, can focus on innovation. And lastly, extending the enterprise boundary, which is basically allowing blockchain to connect to the existing ecosystem, Oracle's own ex ecosystem, as well as other ecosystems that could be custom banking systems or other trading systems by using APIs as well as custom on-ramp uh, integrators. 
With that, I close Oracle's blockchain cloud service, which is the most comprehensive distributed ledger cloud platform, securely extending your business process and conduct online transactions in trusted networks with your suppliers, banks, and other counterparties. For more information about Oracle Blockchain, go to oracle.com slash blockchain or cloud.oracle.com slash blockchain. Thank you.